what's up guys? I hope you enjoyed that little intro I made for you guys. It's basically showing this, my infinitely expandable 3D printer for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Being as I want to keep this as a simple explanation, I'm not going to take too long to explain this. I'm just going to go over the fundamental basics of how this works and stuff like that. So pretty much I'm going to start off by saying this. I modeled, modeled this off of Ilmongo's 3D printer that he made. I will provide a link to his videos in the description below for those of you who are interested in his 3D printer. That was for Minecraft Java Edition, but of course I had to modify this a lot for Bedrock. So again, it runs off the exact same principles, using concrete powder and falling into water, which then changes it into concrete. This also uses sand just like his second one, which helps it actually go a lot faster because I don't... I didn't want a slow printer and this printer is 16 by 26 by 10 16 wide 20 long 10 high you can make it a, the print size a little bit bigger I didn't realize this when I was building it but I accidentally made the tray size two blocks wider than the flying machine system here so yeah you can print bigger bigger or if you wanted to you could print I don't know why you do this but like a 12 by 12 by six cube or something like that in here. Again, as I said, I want to keep this simple, so I'm just going to be doing a quick overview. Basically, when I pull this lever, this sends a pulse down here. This causes the water level to go up once through a dropper chain. At the same time, a clock is started up here, and this one signal gets lengthened here through this lamp and through this observer. It makes a double extender, which causes two pulses here, which cause shulker boxes to be drawn out of this chest I preloaded it basically an item is drawn here and then the second time it's brought down here and spit out where this shulker box unloader it basically unloads the items one at a time through here this is a basic sorter with the respecting color sorting out and causing the respected actual block color to come down here this shover here it was first developed by the bowtie man i will also provide a link to his description in the video below it basically if you want more details on how this actually works uh you can go look at his video and basically the falling block gets shoved here it falls down before being shoved here again and it basically gets brought down on what i call the assembly line where it is assembled and dropped down twice this circuit here is quite different than the one Ilmongo used, but it still does the exact same thing. When the block falls here, a signal gets carried through, causing all this to update. And in the end, I don't want to get too far into this, but when this piston pushes this, it causes this to turn on. And exactly one tick later, this piston is powered, bringing the block up. This link, this uh, four tick repeater lengthens the pulse and turns this off causing these to depower, then repower, and only one block can fall through. It goes on here, then the flying machines are launched. It goes into these one-way flying machines, which are powered by the these observers on the, these flying machines. The flying machine I used for this build, it was first developed by Flight Gaming. It's basically the simple terracotta block swapping piston or flying machine you've seen before. I basically modified it a bit to work for this cause, adding this up here to power these flying machines and then also adding this piston here and using the same principle for the arm here so when the middle sections move down it then pushes and then also pulls this while this pushes that and then once it reaches the end this observer catches up to this piston which is caught on this slime block surface here the unit gets shoved up well the middle unit does and it reverses but at the same time these move forward one block these are basically the way the entire machine works without these flying machines. This 3D printer would not work at all. Once these flying machines get far enough, this one, instead of having a block which pulls the piston back, I have an observer. Once it gets far enough, it powers this. These flying machines will then launch and these basically bring those one-way flying machines back to the start. They reach the end, reverse, and go back. Again, these are the same developed by Flight Gaming. Again, I modified them to work for my purpose. It's pretty much the same design I used for the two ways over there, except the arm is much different. At the same time that these launch, a signal is sent down this line, causing this piston to push, this observer pushes, and this is updated. 
All these fire, causing the water level to go up at once. The coating, I'm not really going to go into any detail about the coating. It's pretty much the same way Omongo used. I just compressed it a bit more, putting as many lines as I could into any shulker box. That's how I could fit all of these in this one instead of having who knows how many. I just have 23. And in case you're wondering, these command blocks, all they do is just restock this concrete powder. They just have a basic set, set block command that uses tilde locations. I just typed in E, whoops. And in case you're wondering what these buttons down here do, all these do is just empty out the tray of respective blocks. So this one does water, this one does sand, and this one does concrete to fully reset the printer and print again. And that is pretty much how my entire printer works. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.